The markets may be very, very optimistic, but the economic picture uh, certainly shows that this is still a very long climb out of the declines that we've seen so far this year. And you've pointed out that as you look to 2021, it's very important to have a portfolio that, that is economically sensitive. What does that look like? Yeah, so I think, you know, if you look about the, the majority of the recovery has been focused on large growth companies, particularly the tech sector like Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, you know, the FANG trades. But, you know, the one thing you got to realize is that after a certain period of time, you know, th those stocks are going to start to get a little bit overvalued, whereas you're starting to see a little bit of what I call rotation. Um, that started back in November, where we're starting to see things like small caps, for example, are starting to uh, are starting to come back. So, like, if you look at, like, the last eight weeks, small caps are up, like, 30% in comparison to, like, the Dow and the S&P. Those are up only about 14%. So, you know, you're really starting to see some some of these sectors that really hadn't done well through the pandemic starting to turn around. Another example would be like energy. Um, it's hit its highest prices since March, even though now it's starting, it's still down about 30% from its highs. But again, we're starting to see recovery there. Other places like emerging markets, um, they've started to really turn around. And you got to remember, like compared to like uh, thinking about forward earnings, the s and is trading at like 22 times earnings. Emerging markets are only trading at like 12 times earnings. So you know, there's, there, these are parts of the economy that are really starting to turn around, but are also still relatively cheap. How much of, of maybe those two ideas, uh, whether it is uh, betting on energy here and that recovery or emerging markets might be covered up by the fact that we've seen the dollar continue to weaken here, uh, particularly in the back half of the year? I mean, how much of the demand uh, equation in your mind is maybe being covered up by that, particularly when we think about oil prices there and where that goes in this recovery? Um, I mean, I think, you know, I, I think it's really more about, you know, as things start to recover, we're going to see more demand for those things, especially as people start to travel, you know, and also people are starting to look for opportunities in their portfolio. Like right now, I wouldn't be buying into the S&P or, or big tech stocks. I'm really looking forward to see where, where the discounts are. Where am I going to get the biggest bang for my buck? When you look at uh, sort of investor portfolios, um, what do you say should be the allocation? Should it be... Uh, Predominantly U.S. equities. Should it be a bit of Europe? Should it be more EM? Um, what are you advising your clients? Um, I, our portfolio, for example, is a little bit slightly heavier weighted in U.S., uh, but you know about thirty percent of the portfolio is in international. We split that between emerging markets, international developed, and uh, for for folks that are on the younger side, also frontier markets. Um, and just because our philosophy is that most of the growth overseas, or excuse me, most of the growth that we're going to see in the future. Uh, it's probably going to come from overseas. You know, you think about like emerging markets where you have some of the fastest growing economies and populations in the world. So, you know, just looking at things in terms of opportunity, uh, that's where we see the biggest opportunities. Should we see, uh, you know, what's playing out in California right now with 0% ICU capacity, maybe start to hit, uh, hopefully not, but maybe back in New York or, or other areas as well. What do you think the propensity is to see perhaps even another uh, stimulus package? Uh, well, I think, you know, the market's always going to be forward looking. So I think what the market's looking at is the fact that we do have a very two very effective vaccines. Um, by the end of March, it should be about 100 million people that are going to be vaccinated. And on top of which, you know, you've got a lot of cash on the sidelines. Um, so there's, and there's also a lot of pent up demand. So I think, you know, once once the floodgates open, so to speak, and we start to see more mass vaccinations, you know, I think those sectors that have really been hard hit hard like travel. Um, and just people's ability to want to spend and get out and do things, I think we're going to see a major melt up in the markets in 2021.